Welcome back to D-Lab, part two of the Gibson EH-125 amplifier repair. In part one, I replaced the filter capacitors. In part two, we're going to try to eliminate that terrible noise that it has. First, I'll give you a little visual inspection and we'll listen to the noise level, show you what I found, we'll correct that, we'll take it step by step, trying to make this little guy quiet. All right, here's where we left off on the Gibson after I changed the filter caps in part one. I also identified that the ground tab on the input jack that should be shorting the signal out when you're not using the jack is bent. This jack is damaged, all right? Right now we're idling, the amp is at zero volume, all the way down, okay? And you can hear we still have quite the noise level, right? Also, you hear that? I assumed that that was a microphonic tube, but that may not be the case. It's very sensitive in this area. So let's take a look underneath and see if we can spot some potential issues that are causing these problems. All right, so let's give the bottom side a little inspection, and I'll show you the things that poke their ugly heads out at me, okay? So here's the new filter caps that I installed. I already told you about the input jack. This grounding tab is bent forward, so it's not grounding that out when a jack's not installed, which is a source of noise. There's also a little bit of green corrosion on there, which is kind of odd. Now somebody in the past had changed all these orange coupling caps, which is a good idea. However, the work was pretty shoddy, okay? For example, take a look at this cap right here. You see how they soldered that on to an existing little stub lead? And then these two crossed? Well, I actually had a little glob of solder between these two and they were shorting. Too much solder for the job. But then, if you look here at the input side, see this cap? That lead goes down here. I know it's kind of hard to see. But if you move this cap, the lead moves with it. It's not soldered. This resistor right here is just hooked up around the terminal. It's like somehow they removed the solder, but just never put new solder in there. If you take a look right down here, it's kind of difficult for me to show you this, but by this 10K resistor right there, you'll see a glob of solder between the two pins on that tube socket, okay? There's a lot of solder globs laying around here. There's another one down there, okay? So I followed my way across, and I was just spotting multiple bad solder connections, including this one on the input jack. It's actually cracked, okay? But you go over here, this capacitor goes right there to the grid of one of the 6v6s. See there? Looser than a goose. So here's a plan. We're going to replace the input jack. I'm going to just go ahead and re-solder these connections and let's see what that does to the noise level. Let's see if that reduces the sensitivity I had in this area. All right, quick update. After removing that old original input jack, I was looking at how they were using the ground lug on that for grounding the preamp tube through this black wire. And this cap here was also joined to the same ground lug using the mechanical connection of the jack to provide the ground to the chassis. But when I removed the jack, there was still paint between the lock washer and the chassis. They had never cleaned that surface. So that was a very poor way to ground the input section. So I landed a little terminal lug here and soldered it direct to the chassis. You can see the runner now goes over to the preamp tube. I swung that cap over. Now we have no need for this black wire. This input jack now will simply have its ground and feed the signal over to the volume pot. I've got the new input jack installed, fixed those grounds. There's our idle noise with the volume all the way down. Let's see if it's really amplifying anything. I'm hearing, hear that? So we still got some sensitivity, but it's not here anymore. It's over here. Which could be some flaky output tubes. 
Alright, so the Gibson is coming along well. As you can see, the noise levels are going down with everything we're doing. The input jack and the bad connections were pretty obvious. Next step, I'm going to change all the resistors and we're going to clean all these connections and rewire this thing the way it should have been done. So why replace all the resistors? Well, look at them. They're dated. These are old style 10% resistors. Probably over the years they've absorbed moisture and they've probably went out of value. So for example, here is a 1 meg resistor. About 1.7 meg. Here is a 5 meg resistor. You can see it's hovering somewhere between 7.5 and 8. Here is a 100K resistor hiding down here. Not too bad, 104. We've got a 10K here. Looks like a 2 water. Come on, 10K. There it is. You know, maybe that's not a 10K. Almost looks like it might be a 3K. Yeah, it's a 3. So 3.4. Anyway, you can see they've all drifted out of tolerance. So the best thing to do is get them all out of there, clean up the bad connections, give this thing a fresh start. Well, I was able to locate the original schematic for this version of the Gibson EH-125. They call this the economy version, 1943. All right, so we have this noise issue, right? And it appears as though the volume control doesn't even attenuate it, which I thought was very strange. But if you look here, you'll see the mic input and these instrument inputs. There's volume control, the low side, it's not even connected. So I looked at that as like, how in the heck would you ever turn the volume down on this amp? Because you're just putting this 500K in series with 100K and it's still going right to the preamp tube. So how do you turn it down? So you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna change this. I've already talked to the owner and explained to him that if he wants a quiet, responsive amp, we need to correct this situation. Because no matter what I do, I won't be able to eliminate the noise. Alright, so here's a plan. This schematic is of my Raven amplifier. Some of you may be familiar with it. So it also uses 6SJ7 as a preamp tube, but this one only had a single output tube. But that's not what we're going to mess with. We're going to look over here at the preamp side. Okay? So take a look where my volume control is. It's after the preamp tube and that feeds the output tubes. That is what we're going to do to this Gibson amp. We're simply going to rewire the volume control from the input to the output side of the 6SJ7. And I guarantee you this thing will be as quiet as can be when I'm done. Back to the chassis. There is that volume control with the low side not connected. I'm going to take this wiring and I'm going to swing that to this side of the 6SJ6. The inputs now will be wired direct to the input grid. Well here's what I've removed so far. I've rewired the amp now with the volume pot after the 6SJ7 tube. Okay, So my input now comes in through a 68K resistor with a 2 meg resistor to ground rather than the 10. All right. I didn't interrupt anything else, but I came off of the output of the 6SJ7 with a 0.1 microfarad cap, going to a new volume pot, which is 1 meg. I got a 1.5K resistor here to help block some of the grid noise going to the inverter tube. Everything else is as it was. So let's fire it up and see what we did to that noise level. Here we go. I've got the volume all the way down. The amp is plugged in. Be nice if they had put a little power indicator on this thing. Anyway, we're plugged in. Now remember, initially I had a loud hiss regardless of the position of the pot. It's warmed up. 
There is full volume, no signal applied. Let's say there's a big difference in noise level. Now, let's go ahead and inject a tone. Make sure it actually amplifies. I'm at around 700 hertz. All right, appears to be working. And no hiss and pops and crackles. Now, the other question was, remember we had um, some sensitivity on the tubes. So there's the 6SJ7. There's the inverter. I'm hearing a little bit on the 6V6. You hear it? So the middle 6V6 has a problem. The other one appears to be fine. All right, so I'm pretty confident that the noise issue is resolved with the Gibson. So at this point, I'm going to continue on with replacing all those old resistors. And unfortunately, I'm going to have to change all these caps. Because after reviewing the schematic, I noticed that every cap in here that was previously replaced was the wrong value. These were supposed to all be 0.1 microfarads, all of these. And they're not. This is a 0.03, this is a 0.05, so on and so forth. So somebody just threw in random stuff, right? The only one that's right is this one, which is the one I just put in, right? So anyway, I'm pretty much going to gut the rest of this, redo it, clean up all these crappy connections, and we should be good to go. All right, mission accomplished. Everything's rewired. Now I have 68K resistors all joining to the input of the preamp tube. Following the preamp tube now is volume control. Got all the new caps in here, proper value. I fixed the AC line mess. It's ready to fire it up. For the final test, I'm gonna go ahead and install the new tubes because we know that this one here is noisy. No reason to do the final test with old tubes, right? All right, here we go. Got the new tubes installed. Amp is on. Bring up a little bit of volume. You can see if we have any spurious noises when I move things. We don't. So now let's pop a signal into it. Now how this is wired, you have to use the microphone jack first. Once that is being used, it opens up the shorting bar on that input jack and allows the other two to be used. If you try one of those first, you're probably not going to get much sound. Okay, so here we go. All kinds of volume. And you'll notice there is a little bit of noise when you turn this pot. Okay, and that's normal because that pot is going direct to the input of the inverter tube. Now, there, there is a little grid stopper type resistor in there to help with that. But that's just a natural thing that happens when you put a volume pot in line at that point. But you're not going to be sitting here like cranking on the pot all day, right? You're going to set it and you're going to play. It'll be noise free. All right, so you're probably wondering, does it actually work with a guitar? Well, yes, it does. It's about half volume. That's volume at seven, I'll crank her. So it's working great, it's nice and quiet. And you may think, you know, I want a little more gain out of my amp. Well, let me show you a trick. All right, so the 6SJ7 is a great tube. It was used in a lot of vintage amps. However, it lacks gain, right? So, I'll show you an old ham radio tech tip. This is a 6AC7. It has the same pinout, same configuration as the 6SJ7. However, it has a lot more gain. And it's a drop-in replacement for the 6SJ7. So watch what happens when I put that tube in the amp. All right, I'm back to half volume setting. Okay, you remember how loud it was with the SJ? 
That's the AC7. I'm going to crank it up. That's not even all the way up. Megaton of more gain. So there's a tech tip for you. If you want a little more gain, a little bark out of your old Gibson, put in a 6AC7. All right, so that's a wrap on the Gibson EH-125 amplifier repair with a bonus tech tip for you on that 6AC7. Isn't that cool? Now, yes, the amp is slightly modified now, but it's usable. Could you even play that amp in its stock configuration? I don't think so. So if you want to do this to your Gibson amp and what you saw in the video is not clear enough, shoot me an email and I'll help to clarify it so that you can do it too. We'll see you again.